Hello and welcome to this Power Query tutorial with me, James from Matador Software, where we're looking at six simple steps to power up your Power Query efficiency um, in Power BI and Excel. So these six steps are, are really easy to implement, but provide some really rich and important functionality. So we'll look at preventing automatic data types, uh, using monospace font in the query editor, extracting Power Query steps, the go to column feature. We'll be looking at deleting the, the last steps until the end of our queries. And also one of my favorite features, creating a column from examples. So that sounds like something you're interested in. Hang on and we'll, we'll look at all of these. It'll be a nice quick tutorial and hopefully you learn a lot. So the first tip we'll look at is disabling automatic data type detection. So you see in the applied steps underneath source, we get change type usually as a de facto default step. Now the issue there is that if you have unstructured data, this can be problematic. And most of the time you usually want to have a say if we're looking at modeling correctly and being careful, looking at performance, whatever that may be, we probably want to allocate these ourselves. Well, there's a simple way to do this. You can go into file. You want to hit options and settings and options again. And when you do so, you'll get the GUI for the settings up. And in data load, you can check away from always detect to, to never detect column types and headers. And that will resolve that issue. So top tip number two, using monospace font in the query editor. Well, you can see here in this sample query, I've got monospace font. It looks different than the standard. The reason I use this, if I have reference numbers or emails, it's actually significantly easier to read and process. And, and again, that just contributes to usability and efficiency. So we can edit that by going into the Power Query editor under global settings or options, and we can check display preview contents using a monospace font. I've already done that, but if you hadn't, obviously it's as simple as checking that and then restarting Power Query and Power BI or Excel, whatever it may be um, for those changes to action. So next we're going to look at go to column. In this example, I've got a query with many columns and some quite often in a professional environment, you probably have many more. Um, so you can actually hit view and click go to column in the middle of the ribbon there. And if you know what you're looking for, so one thing a salesperson would be something that's quite universal and we'd regularly want insight on, you can actually just type it in, double click, and there we go. We get to salesperson. If we wanted to do something else, we could use our text filters, maybe filter by S to look for a specific person and so on, but it's much easier and it's it's a really good time saving element in, in large queries and large uh, column based data sets to get the information we require. So top tip four, split a query into two parts to help us with our efficiency. So let's say I want to right click um, at a certain stage throughout my queries and I can click extract previous and what this is going to do is extract all the steps before the item that I've clicked. It's not the most intuitive name, but that's what it does. Um, I can supply a new query name, and this is automatically going to split it into two different queries. So let's say I've got high cost products. Well, maybe I had a stage where I removed a lot of redundant columns and I want to use this in other queries in a repeatable step. Well, that's how we can do this very simply um, and stage out our steps and still get the same insights within our high cost products or any other column or query that may be relevant to you. Another useful one by the same token, delete query steps until the end. So let's say after remove excess columns, actually um, we've done this incorrectly, we've built it on incorrect foundations. So the steps afterwards aren't gonna return correct items for our use case. That's so fundamentally wrong. So it can just right click um, and remove those steps until the end and I can rebuild and restart again um, significantly easier. And this is obviously very relevant if you had 20 or 30 applied steps, whatever that may be, if you're not blessed with having some great source data. So the last tip for efficiency in this tutorial is potentially my favorite, um, where we can actually harness some AI um, to add a column from examples. So I'll show you what that means in this IT case. We have user emails for our IT department, first name, surname, and help desk cases resolved. 
So let's say um, I want to concatenate a full name. Well, you could easily do this with, um, you know, within the, the Power Query editor, but we can actually just give one example and the AI sort of like with a Google search has an autofill function where we can actually just apply that straight away and you'll see it merges automatically based on that one suggestion. So it's a very quick way to add in some more data within Power Query. Now, there's lots of other interesting things you could do. There's mathematical operators. If you had numeric heavy data, you can do all sorts of calculations. But let's say here I have emails, but I have Matador traders and Matador suppliers where one half of our IT users are dealing with the standard Matador trader IT functions and the other one for all of our suppliers. So in this email, I'm actually extracting the IT domain from the email address. So you'll see just from the end of the email, it's intelligent enough to pick that up. However, in this third example, if we supply Matador suppliers, because that's the end of that domain, you can see it efficiently now iterates through each row and gives us the correct detail, whether they're in the Matador traders IT or the Matador suppliers. And it also gives you the, the actual M code that it's using. So that's very useful, especially if you want to take a peek under the hood or behind the scenes. So in this last example, maybe I want to add a delimiter. Take the cases resolved by domain employees. So, so which side they fall under, Matador Software Traders and the help desk cases resolved. Um, and it's very simple because we've went through the steps before. The query editor has learned from the, the information that we gave it and, it and it's a very slick and simple process. Obviously, like I said, much more advanced calculations, but it's that is great functionality and saves you a lot of hassle on the advanced editor with M code. So that's been six tips, very simple and quick to improve your Power Query efficiency in Power BI and Excel. As usual, if you like this content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.